gone to the movies or seen a live performance, and when we watch actors and actresses deliver their performance, we're watching them utilize a process that involves a person being able to think back to a certain time and recall it to the point that they are able to, in a sense, relive the emotions associated with that particular experience. This is called emotional memory or affective memory, and that's what I'll be talking about today. Uh, I'll go over the general processes involved with emotional memory and how uh, actors or performers use it in their careers, and also how some people are hoping to exploit this process in order to change an individual's feelings or response towards a specific memory. Now, according to the multiple memory system theory, we form and retrieve our memories from two distinct systems. There is the explicit memory system, which is associated with the conscience, and there is implicit memory system, which includes subconsciously formed memories. In other words, memories that are formed without our knowing. By studying these two different systems, neuroscientists have a better understanding of how we learn through the experiences we have. First is the process of formation. New memories are stored in the medial temporal lobe, but it is the hippocampus that processes temporary memories that are either going to be forgotten or stored in our long-term memory banks, as we often call them. Uh, these memories that are processed by the hippocampus are our explicit memories from a certain situation or event in our past. The intensity of the hippocampus's activity is determined by the input from the amygdala, and it is the amygdala that processes implicit memories. Now, implicit memories go undetected by our conscience because our autonomic nervous system is triggered and masks the memory during the formation process. Next is the retrieval of these now formed and stored memories. These memories brought into conscious awareness are explicit memories, and when that specific memory is that of a personal experience, it's considered to be an episodic memory, more specifically. Uh, the expression of the response of the memory retrieved is due to implicit memory. These expressions are often involuntary as they are not recalled consciously. I had a roommate who would get sad uh, anytime she heard the song Free Falling by John Mayer. And I remember being in the dorm room one day and that song came on my Pandora station. Now she asked me to quickly change it and I was a little confused but she explained to me that the song happened to be playing the day her boyfriend broke up with her so she did not like to listen to that song anymore. Um, now in relation to what I've been talking about, the explicit memory is that of the breakup and because that song happens to be a part of the memory, uh, whenever she hears it, it triggers uh, that event all over again and she gets sad because her implicit memory is recalling the response she had during the actual event of the breakup. She doesn't willingly bring up these sad emotions all over again, but they come involuntarily. The response to the memory is very real, and she refuses to listen to the song because it's as if she's forced to relive that moment all over again. Now, similarly, actors use this concept to provoke certain emotions. Uh, the only difference is that they need to channel these emotions on demand rather than having them come without an, any voluntary say. And therefore, they often utilize Stanislavski's system, which is a series of techniques used to train actors how to channel emotion and produce a believable performance. Performers are trained to use their personal experiences to develop the character they're trying to portray. There is a scene, if there's a scene in where the character needs to be sad, the performers cannot simply think of being sad. Uh, instead, they need to think of an event that will coax the right emotion out of their memory bank. They're asked to imagine themselves in the shoes that are in the place of that character. By asking questions such as what if or what would forces them to think and actually retrieve a specific memory that can possibly correlate to that question. And for example, what would I do if somebody tripped me on purpose? Um, by answering a question like this, the performer can be even more believable to the audience as if they were reliving that experience, just as my roommate relives the breakup when she hears Free Falling by John Mayer. Actors intentionally use the concept and uh, mechanisms behind emotional memory to their advantage and are able to channel an emotion for an authentic performance. And on a smaller scale, people also take advantage of their previous experiences to come up with a certain emotion on the spot by recalling a relevant time in their past. But what if your memory is associated with an emotion so strong that it poses a threat to your physical health, such as post-traumatic stress disorder? 
or PTSD. There is research that shows memories are not concrete, but rather very malleable and can be rebuilt each time they're recalled. This means doctors and psychotherapists can possibly help patients block emotions such as fear when recalling a traumatic event. Scientists have also found a drug that can administer and be administered to reduce the process of reconsolidation by inhibiting biochemical processes that are needed to restore memory after recall. This means that doctors can actually, in a sense, rewrite the emotional uh, impact of a memory without disturbing the episodic memory itself. In other words, a patient could still keep all of their memories and recall the event, but the response associated with that memory is weakened. So why does this matter? Well, this would greatly reduce the stress of a post-traumatic stress disorder patient and um, any other patient who had some sort of trauma and is inflicted by anxiety from a flashback. And so my question to you is, should this be co uh, considered a cure? Is it even ethical to mess with somebody's personal memories, even if it could be beneficial to their health? I don't know, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. Thank you.